because that is going to allow your body to provide it with a new stimulus. And by providing it with a new stimulus, it is going to have to adapt to that new stimulus by either building muscle or getting stronger. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you the top 10 reasons you're not getting stronger. But before I start, you guys know the drill. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, ding, ding, ding. And if you don't want to watch the entire video, I will be including timestamps in the description so you guys can skip ahead to the section that you want. Now, onto the topic at hand. A lot of people, when they are trying to get stronger, they make a lot of mistakes, especially if they're not familiar with how to design a proper program. So I'm gonna be listing 10 reasons why you are not getting stronger. The number one reason why you are not getting stronger is that you're not strength training. Now, when it comes to strength, you can build a good amount of muscle and strength from doing calisthenics, which is just using your own body weight, but eventually you're going to get to a point where you're going to plateau and you're going to need to incorporate some type of resistance training in terms of higher loads if you would like to progress along your strength journey. So if you are not strength training, you will eventually hit a block where you will not be able to get any stronger because eventually your body is going to adapt to using your own body weight. This is one of the things behind the said principle, the specific adaptation to impose demands. If you are somebody who is only doing calisthenics and you only use your body weight, eventually your body is going to adapt to that type of stimulus and it's going to need a different type of stimulus if you want it to get stronger and more muscular. So in order to do that, you need to change the implementations. You either need to move over to doing some type of weight training or you're gonna need to find a way to make your exercises more challenging. You could do that with weighted exercises. So if you are doing calisthenics, you can put on a weight vest and incorporate some additional loads that way, either doing weighted squats weighted push-ups, weighted pull-ups. Those are a few of the ways that you can increase the intensity and also bust through any plateaus that you are having with your training. But if you are not incorporating strength training into your routine, then that is going to be the main reason why you are not getting stronger. The second reason why you are not getting stronger is that you're not training at the proper intensity. If you watched my videos on program design, then you know that depending on the training goal, there's going to be different levels of intensities that you want to train at. And when I say intensity, I am referring to percentage of your one repetition maximum. When it comes to strength training, that is what is meant by intensity. Intensity does not mean hard or not hard. It means what percentage of your one repetition max are you lifting? Now, depending on your goal, if you are training for strength endurance and you would like to improve your endurance, you need to be training anywhere from 30 to 69% intensity, which is going to be 30% to 69% of your one repetition maximum. If your main objective is to get bigger and you want to increase hypertrophy, well, hypertrophy, ideally you would want to train between 70 to 78% intensity, which would be 70 to 78% of your one repetition maximum. For absolute strength, absolute strength is going to be optimized when you're training between 79 to 84% of your one repetition maximum. And for relative strength, that is going to be the most beneficial when you are training at loads of 85% to 100 or more percent of your one repetition maximum. Now, when it comes to these different variables, you do not need to stick to these specific guidelines. You can mix around the different variables. However, if you are a beginner or intermediate, you can stick within these percentages and you will continue to get stronger on these. When it comes to the actual repetition ranges for each of these percentages, well, for strength endurance at 30 to 69%, that is going to equate to 13 or more repetitions. For hypertrophy, which is muscle building, that is going to equate to nine to 12 repetitions and that's going to be at that 70 to 78% range. When it comes to absolute strength at 79 to 84%, that's gonna equate to six to eight repetitions. And for relative strength at 85 to 100 or more percent of your one repetition maximum, that is going to equate to one to five repetitions. So if you are not training in the proper intensity zone, then you are not going to elicit the response that you want to get and you are going to see stalls when it comes to either hyper hypertrophy or strength. And if you want to get stronger, you need to be training in those hypertrophy and strength zones. You need to train in strength because relative strength is going to increase how strong you are relative to your body weight. And also if you are hitting a plateau, you also would like to increase your hypertrophy. So your muscle size, because mass moves mass. So the bigger you are, the more weight you'll be able to push. So if you want to increase your absolute strength, then you need to train in relative strength, absolute strength, and hypertrophy. If you are just interested in increasing your strength, relative to your body weight that you want to train in the relative strength zone, which is going to be that 85 to 100% or one to five repetitions. Now, the number three reason why you are not getting stronger is that you're not resting long enough between your sets. 
depending on the type of training that you're doing, you're gonna have to take different rest periods and that's going to elicit a different response from your muscles. If you are training for strength endurance, your rest periods are going to be fairly short, anywhere from 10 seconds to 60 to 90 seconds. If you're training for hypertrophy, the rest periods are gonna be a little bit longer, anywhere from 60 seconds to 90, maybe even 120. If you're training for absolute strength, 120 to 180 seconds rest in between sets is going to be optimal. And if you're training for relative strength, you are going to want to rest anywhere from 180 seconds to 300 seconds. That's gonna be three to five minutes. These numbers are more for beginners. Depending on your level and how advanced you are, you may want to rest a little bit longer. Let's say you are somebody who is already very strong and you already have a lot of muscle mass. Well, the stronger you are and the more muscle mass you have, the longer you are going to need to require because the more muscle mass you have, that means your muscles are going to be bigger. And the bigger the muscle group, the longer it takes to recover. Same thing with strength. If you are stronger, the stronger you get, the more rest you are going to need in between your sets. Now, this is within reason. You're not gonna to wanna to take a one hour break if you are incredibly strong, but you are going to want to rest more than that three to five minutes, especially if it's a really big lift, like something like a deadlift. For me personally, when I was doing my deadlift training a few years ago to hit a three time bodyweight deadlift, I'll show you the video right over here. I remember in the program leading up to that lift, I was doing a 1-6 workout, which basically meant I would do a set of six repetitions, I would rest for five minutes, do a set of one, then I would do another set of six, increase the load a little bit, I would rest for five minutes, do another set of one, increase the load a little bit, do another set of six, increase the load, do another set of one, and increase the load. And that was the training program that I did leading up to that one repetition maximum deadlift. And because I was training at a very high intensity and because I was already quite strong, that lift over there was 475 pounds and I was only 148 pounds, sorry, 158 pounds. That is why I was taking longer rest because when you are training for really, really high intensities and very, very low repetitions, you are going to need that extra time to recover. Now, if this had been 10 years ago when I was doing my deadlift training, my rests would not have been at that five minute mark because my strength was not as much as it was in that video. So 10 years ago, my rest may have been only three minutes instead of five. But the stronger that you get, the longer you're going to need to rest. And you'll see this with a lot of professional strongmen and powerlifters. If you watch videos of Thor, half Thor Bjornsson, he ended up breaking the world record set by Eddie Hall in the deadlift a few months ago. And in that video, as he approached his one repetition maximum to break the record, he would rest up to 10 minutes. And even in the training videos that he put up, he would rest up to 10 minutes in between his sets. And if you are at that level of strength and you are going for just insane amounts of load that you have to lift, you are going to require a lot more rest. So three to five minutes would be for the average person if you are already a beginner or pretty strong. If you're a beginner, closer to the three minute mark. If you're already an intermediate or pretty strong to begin with, then closer to that five minute mark. If you are an elite level strength athlete and you are lifting a crazy amount of weight, you are going to want to rest even longer than that three to five minutes. Up to 10 minutes would be beneficial for you. Now, the number four reason why you are not getting stronger is that you're not allowing enough recovery time between your workouts. Depending on the type of training split that you are doing, you're going to want to give yourself a few days before hitting the same muscle groups. If you do not give yourself enough time to recover in between your workouts, what's going to happen is your muscle is never going to have the proper amount of time to repair itself. And because it doesn't repair itself optimally, it's going to hinder your strength gains. So if you are doing any type of training and a really high intensity, the more intense your workouts are, the more rest you're gonna to wanna to give between the workout of the same muscle group. So let's say you are doing deadlifts. When you are doing deadlifts, ideally, pretty much this can apply to any lift, but I'm gonna use deadlift as an example. You're gonna to wanna to give yourself anywhere from 48 to 72 hours of rest between you do that same either exercise, body part, or lift again. So if you are doing either a deadlift workout, a bench press workout, squat workout, whatever your workout is, before you do that workout again, you should give yourself 48 to 72 hours. That's going to be the average. 
Some people can get away with recovering a little bit quicker. Some people, every other day, they'll be able to hit the same muscle group. Other people, they're gonna need a little bit longer rest, especially if you are at that really high level athlete level, then you may want to even go higher up to five days of recovery between exercises. But for the average person, 48 to 72 hours rest is going to be the most beneficial in between your workouts. The number five reason why you are not getting stronger is that you're not focusing on the eccentric portion of the lift. The eccentric portion is going to be the lowering phase. You have four different phases of the lift. You have the eccentric portion, which is the lowering. Then you have the pause at the bottom position. You have the concentric phase, which is the lifting portion of the lift. And then you have the pause at the top. Those are the four different phases of your different repetitions. And the thing with eccentric training is when you focus on eccentric training, you remove some of the elastic energy that is stored in the muscle tendon. Whenever you do any type of lifting, you can think of the tendon as a spring coil. As you bring the weight down in a bench press, you are going to create a stretch on the pectoralis major, and that stretch is going to store elastic energy in the tendon. And by storing that elastic energy, it is going to make the lift a lot easier. So one way that you can make it a little bit more challenging and improve your strength gains is to go slower on the eccentric portion because when you go slower on the eccentric portion, you are going to mitigate some of that elastic energy that is stored in the muscle tendon and you're going to have to work a little bit more in the concentric portion of the lift to be able to lift the load that you are lifting. So by focusing on the eccentric portion and really slowing down, you are going to see greater strength gains. And one thing that I love to do with my clients and I do in my own programs is I always have a very specific specific tempo that I follow. So let's say I have somebody doing a bench press and I have them follow a 4020 tempo. What that means is that they are going to lower the weight down to the chest for four seconds and then without resting they're going to push it up for two seconds and then they're going to immediately go into the next repetition without resting at the top. So by incorporating a very specific tempo that will allow you to bust through certain plateaus. Another thing with regard to the eccentric training is I like to work out with a metronome and the reason I like to work out with a metronome is because by using a metronome and setting it to 60 beats per minute, 60 beats per minute means that every single beat is going to be equal to exactly one second. So when I listen to a metronome, if I am doing a 4020 tempo, I know that I have to count four beats of the metronome and then two beats on the way up to have the proper tempo throughout the workout. So I would highly encourage you to start focusing more on eccentric training and tempo in general. And when it comes to tempo, I would highly encourage you to either download a metronome or go to getsongbpm.com, find songs that are 120 beats per minute, if a song is 120 beats per minute, that means that every two beats is going to be equal to exactly one second. So find your favorite songs that are 120 beats per minute and then count every two beats as one second. And one final thing that I would like to touch on when it comes to eccentric training is that you are a lot stronger during the eccentric portion of the lift than you are in the concentric, which means you can lower a weight at a much higher load than you can push the actual weight. Let's say you have a bench press. To be able to take the bar off of the pegs and slowly lower it, you can lift way more than your actual one repetition maximum. This is why I said 85 to 100 or more percent of your one repetition maximum, because this sometimes confuses people. When people hear more than 100%, they think it's a mistake, because how can you lift more than 100%? 100% is 100%. Well, during the eccentric training, you can actually lift more. You can lift up to 30% more eccentrically than you can during the concentric lift. So if you are incorporating eccentric training and not just eccentric during the repetitions, but an actual eccentric training program, then let's say your one repetition max is 100 kilos on the squat. You can put 130 kilos on the squat and just lower it down to the pegs and then take a little bit of rest to recover and then go back into it. Same thing for the squat. If you have a squat, just unrack the bar. You can lower it really slowly. Let's say your one repetition max is 100 kilos, put 130 kilos on the bar, lower it, and then your spotter could either lift it off or if you don't have a spotter, you just lower it to the pegs, rest, take the weights off, restack it, and then do that again. This is going to be for more advanced lifters. If you are a beginner or intermediate, if you've been training for less than two years, then I would not recommend doing eccentric training in the way that I just mentioned of going above 100% of your one repetition maximum because if you are a beginner or intermediate, you will get really good strength gains just from doing the things I stated earlier, from training in those proper intensity zones. And if you train at more than 100% intensity for these lifts, there is a greater chance of injury. So this is reserved for more advanced lifters and elite level athletes. Now, the number six reason why you are not getting stronger is because you're not incorporating pauses into your training. 
Just as with eccentric training, pauses also help to mitigate the effect of the elastic energy stored in the muscle tendon. Now, when it comes to elastic energy in the muscle tendon, if you pause at the bottom for one second, you are going to eliminate roughly 50% of the elastic energy that is stored in the muscle tendon. If you pause at the bottom for two seconds, you are going to eliminate roughly 80% of the elastic energy that is stored in the muscle tendon. And if you rest at the bottom position for four seconds, you virtually eliminate all of the elastic energy that is stored in the muscle tendon. So if you would like to make it a little bit more challenging and improve your strength gains by incorporating pauses during the lift, that will make it much more difficult and it's going to force your body to get a lot stronger because it's almost like starting from scratch. Imagine, if you will, the bench press, for example. If you take a bench press and you lower it all the way down to your chest and then press it back up, that's not going to be too difficult. Whereas if you place that same load on the pegs and you try to push it straight from your chest without the lowering phase first, you don't have that elastic energy stored in your muscle tendon. So it's going to be a lot more difficult. You can try this out. Try a comfortable load. Now do an eccentric lift and then right away without pausing, press it up. You're gonna see how easy that feels. The next time, place the bar on the pegs and you wanna get under it. And then from a dead start, you wanna just push it. The exact same load is going to feel much more difficult when you do it straight off the pegs. So by doing a slow eccentric and then pausing for four seconds, that pause for four seconds is going to eliminate virtually all the elastic energy stored in the tendon. Now, you can also incorporate both eccentrics with a pause. I already stated that the slower eccentric lift that you do, the less elastic energy you're going to have stored in the muscle tendon. So if you are focusing on eccentric training, then you don't need to incorporate quite as long of a pause into your training. Let's say you do a four second eccentric. Well, you're already gonna eliminate some of the elastic energy that's stored in the tendon. So instead of doing a four second pause at the bottom, you could probably do a two second pause and still eliminate all of the elastic energy. So you can play around with those different things, but you wanna focus on eccentric training and you also want to incorporate pauses. The other thing with pauses is there's another way that you can incorporate pauses. Pausing at the bottom is going to make it a lot more difficult because you eliminate the elastic energy. However, you can also pause at the top part of the lift after the concentric portion of the lift because when you pause at the bottom, you are pausing at a disadvantageous position because that's where you are weakest. When you pause at the top of a lift, you are pausing at the most advantageous position because that's where you are your strongest and that gives you a little bit of a break. So let's say you are training at a really high intensity and you are training for, let's say one to five repetitions. So you're training for five repetitions. What you can do is let's say you have a squat, you do your one repetition, you come up, and then you give yourself two to three seconds break at the top. That will allow you to train at a higher intensity and that little break at the top, because it's at an advantageous position, it's gonna give you a little bit of time to recover and you'll be able to do more repetitions with a load that normally you would not be able to accomplish as many repetitions. Now, the number seven reason why you are not gaining muscle is because you're in too big of a calorie deficit. If you are in too big of a calorie deficit, let's say you are trying to get stronger while also losing weight, what's going to happen is you get your energy from the calories that you consume through food. So when you drastically cut your calories, you are limiting the amount of energy that you are taking into your body. And because you have less energy, you are also going to be a lot weaker in the gym. You'll see this all the time with a lot of elite level bodybuilders. Once they get really close to their competition, when they're really, really lean and cutting down and their calories are down to almost zero, they're a lot weaker in the gym. So if you are in a state of a caloric deficit and you are in a drastic caloric deficit, then it is going to definitely hinder your strength gains. If your main objective is to get stronger, then you shouldn't be in a drastic caloric deficit. Rather, you would be better off doing a slow deficit, something like maybe 250 calories. If you're in a 250 calorie deficit, that's going to equate to roughly half a pound of fat loss per week. So if you are trying to improve your strength and you want to lose some fat, but you don't want to sacrifice your strength in order to lose the fat, then go for a smaller caloric deficit as opposed to a very large caloric deficit because you will be stronger in the gym on a smaller caloric deficit. The number eight reason why you are not getting stronger is because you're under too much stress. 
Now, when it comes to stress, there are many different types of stress that you will encounter throughout the day. And most people, when they think of stress, they only think of mental stress, but we have physical stressors as well. It doesn't matter what type of stress you are experiencing. From a physiological standpoint, your body is incapable of differentiating between these different types of stressors. It doesn't matter if you're stressed because you got out of a bad relationship. It doesn't matter if you're stressed because you have tons of bills to pay. It doesn't matter if you're stressed because you did five hours of cardio your body is going to release the hormone cortisol. Cortisol is your stress hormone and it gets secreted whenever you are under stress. So if you are constantly under stress, chronic stress is going to wreak havoc on your strength gains because when your cortisol levels are chronically elevated throughout the day, what's going to happen is your testosterone levels are going to drop. And if your testosterone levels drop, it's going to negatively impact your strength gains. So if you are somebody who is under a lot of stress, doing things to mitigate the stress response from your body would definitely be beneficial. Things like taking up a meditation practice, doing a hot bath, one hour a day doing something that you actually enjoy just to kind of calm your mind and relax you. All of those things will definitely improve how your body performs because the more you can relax your body and just ease your mind, the less cortisol your body's gonna produce. And if your levels of cortisol are not constantly elevated throughout the day, then your body's going to perform at an optimal level. So if you can find ways to minimize your stress levels, it will drastically improve your strength gains because you're not going to have the negative effect of the cortisol suppressing your testosterone testosterone levels. Now, the number nine reason why you are not getting stronger is that you're changing up your workouts too frequently. This is a mistake that a lot of people make. And one of the things when it comes to working out, depending on your level of fitness, it's going to dictate how many times you can perform a given workout before your body adapts to that workout. If you are somebody who is brand new to the gym, you've never worked out before, you can probably do the same workout for 12 times before you start to hit a plateau on that workout. Whereas if you are an elite level athlete, somebody who has been training intensely for 30, 40 years, well, because your body has become so effective and efficient at exercising, you are going to have to change up your workouts a lot more frequently. An elite level athlete cannot get away with doing the same workout 12 times in a row. They may have to change their workout every three to four days, some of them even every single workout. But for the average person, six to 12 workouts is going to be the sweet spot of when you want to change your workouts. I know that for me personally, at around six workouts, I start to hit a plateau and I notice that either I'm not able to increase the load, I'm not able to increase the repetitions, or I'm just getting a lot more tired and I need a little bit more rest. So for me, every six workouts is when I like to change up my routine. And with most of my clients, it's around that same time too. If it's more my elite athletes, I'll change up the workouts more frequently. If I'm dealing with somebody who's more new and they're coming to me more for health reasons, then I'll prolong their workouts a little bit more. But on average, I would say six workouts for the average person is going to be beneficial, but keep track of it. Keep a training log, keep track of the loads that you're lifting, the intensity you're training at, your sets, your repetitions. Once you notice that you're starting to hit a little bit of a plateau and that either you're not able to do more repetitions, more sets, or more weight, then that workout is done for you. You're no longer seeing any benefits. Change up your workout if you want to continue to get stronger. And finally, the number 10 reason why you're not getting stronger is that you're performing the same workout for too long. This may seem a little bit confusing because I just said in the last point that you're changing up your workouts too frequently. Well, just as with that point, you can change your workouts too frequently and you can also perform the same workout for too long. And this is another mistake that I would constantly see, especially when I was younger. I remember when I first started out 16 years ago and I would see people in the gym, they were just doing the same workout for an entire year. They never changed it up. And one of the problems is the said principle, specific adaptations to oppose demand. So once you are performing a given workout, your body is going to adapt to that workout. And once your body adapts, it has no reason to build muscle or get stronger because the stimulus that you're providing it with, it is already capable of doing it. You need to provide your body with a new type of stimulus if you want it to grow and get stronger. So if you are performing the same workout for too long, your body will eventually adapt and you're going to hit a plateau. Once you hit a plateau, if you continue to do that workout, once you've already hit a plateau, not only are you going to stop seeing results, but your results are gonna go in the opposite direction and they're gonna go downhill and you're gonna to start to get weaker. So as soon as you notice that you're approaching a plateau, especially once you hit a plateau, you definitely wanna change up the workout and do something different because that is going to allow your body to provide it with a new stimulus. And by providing it with a new stimulus, it is going to have to adapt to that new stimulus by either building muscle or getting stronger. 
Those are pretty much the top 10 reasons why you're not getting stronger. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button so I know to make more of these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you again tomorrow.